Over the past few years, Egyptians, both rich and poor, have developed a new favorite pastime, revolution. Word has gone out over social media. Tomorrow there will be a huge gathering to once again rid the country of its president. A few overly enthusiastic demonstrators have gathered early to kick things off. It's a brave but dangerous move. With so few protesters, the police could just arrest them and haul them off. In Egyptian revolutions, there is safety in numbers. But the government doesn't seem to be taking it very seriously, and not a single policeman shows up. The next morning, the whole of Cairo is on the move. Drunk on their own prior success, they're taking to the streets again. One thing they all have in common, the Egyptian flag. This march is as much about patriotism as it is about protest. They block almost every intersection, but nobody seems to mind. For this one brief, shining moment, Egypt is a country united. But under the surface, the young men are seething with frustration. Two-thirds of Egypt's population is under 30. Each year, Cairo graduates 700,000 students, and only one in three will find a job. Unemployment is at a record high. And with the majority of Egypt's population surviving on $2 a day, parents can't feed their children, even without the threatened price hike in bread and fuel. They're all heading for Tahrir, Liberation Square, the symbolic heart of Cairo, to once again bring down the government. It's a cross-section of Egyptian society, men and women. conservative and liberal, Muslim and Christian. The broad and spontaneous nature of the protest makes it almost impossible for the government to redirect. It's also one of the more endearing sides of Egyptian culture. They're extremely sociable and make friends easily. Even foreign journalists like me get an exuberant welcome. The young men take a leading role, but in reality this is a thinly veiled power struggle between the military and the Muslim Brotherhood. But quite honestly, it seems more like a party than a revolution. Women have come out in force. They make up almost 15% of the protesters. Some have even brought their babies along. There's face paint for the kids. This could be a sports event. And masks for the grown-ups. Dancing to the tambourine. And an astonishing amount of noise.
They even have fireworks. And balloons. It's not dangerous at all. In fact, it's electrifying. A time of incredible hope and expectation. Egypt is the most populous nation in the Arab world. And this revolution is happening online. Broadcast to an international audience. What happens here reverberates around the globe. As night falls, the party intensifies. aren't particularly reliable. Or impressive. In fact, they may be the most dangerous part of the event. The protesters have set up tents in the middle of Tahrir Square as well as a place to pray. Plenty of food. And the all-important tea. They're here for as long as it takes to bring down the government. Most are hoping that the military will step in. The army is hugely popular. Every time a helicopter flies over Tahrir, the cheering can be heard for miles. But is the military responding to the will of the people or using them to take over again? Two days go by. Then three. And suddenly, it's over. In a classic military coup, President Morsi is removed from power. The crowd goes wild. But for the Muslim Brotherhood, it's a disaster. Thousands immediately set up camp at nearby Rabah Mosque. The military labels all Muslim brothers terrorists. And the stage is set for confrontation. In Egypt, conspiracy theories are very popular. When America refuses to endorse the military coup, public opinion quickly turns against the West. But when I go to Rabah Mosque, I find a friendly and peaceful gathering. They're even handing out free water to anyone who asks. And dates. A good thing, since they may be here for a while. Everyone who shows up gets checked for weapons. Even me. Though it's mostly a symbolic gesture. If the military decides to attack, their wooden staves and padded vests won't stand a chance against the army's overwhelming weaponry. The Brotherhood is claiming the moral high ground. If Egypt is a democracy, they say, the military cannot legally remove an elected president. 
Egyptians are now pitted against each other. One nation, no more. The country is on the brink of civil war. On roads and bridges throughout Cairo, young men gather to fight. Ambulances park nearby and wait for the inevitable. It only takes five days for the first shot to be fired. Tahrir Square is still celebrating the military takeover, but the party now has a wild and predatory edge. The children and fireworks have disappeared, and husbands are getting their wives out of the square. thick with rage and frustration. The men are getting dangerous. Without warning, they turn their anger on the women. A few men see what's coming and move quickly to form a human shield. Locking arms with the women inside. Hundreds make it to safety. Though even with the men protecting them, it's touch and go for a while. Many women aren't so lucky. Dozens still on the outside are gang raped. The wilding goes on until dawn.